So I've decided I'm gonna read a couple of short stories. Um, this is from a book that I, uh, I found when I started doing my education research work and it's kind of come in handy over um, the years, um, especially as the whole AI singularity, blockchain, hive mind consciousness has become more and more relevant. It's from 2014, I think I got it a few years after that, but it's called Robot Uprisings. And um, tonight I'm just gonna read a short story. It's by Hugh Howey and it's called, um, it's either exec executable, <laughs> executable. I think it's actually executable. Um, so, anyway, so I'm going to start with that. Um, the council was quiet while they awaited his answer. All those on the makeshift benches behind him seemed to hold their breath. This is why they came here to hear how it all began, how the end began. Jamal shifted nervously on the bamboo. He could feel his palms grow damp. It wasn't the guilt of what his lab had released. It was how damn crazy it would all sound. It was the Roomba, he said. That was the first thing we noticed, the first thing, the first hint that something wasn't right. A flurry of whispers. It sounded like the waves nearby were growing closer. The Roomba, said one of the council members, the man with no beard. He scratched his head in confusion. The only woman on the council peered down at Jamal. She adjusted her glasses, which had been cobbled together from two or three different pairs. Uh, those are the little vacuum cleaners, right? The round ones? Yeah, Jamal said. Stephen was one of our project coordinators and he brought it from home and he was sick of the cheese puff crumbs everywhere. We were a bunch of programmers, you know, and like a lot of cheese puffs and Mountain Dew. And Stephen was a neat freak. And so he brought in this Roomba and we thought it was a joke, but I mean, the little guy did a damn good job at least until things went screwy. One of the council members made a series of notes. Jamal shifted his weight, his butt already going numb. The bamboo bench they'd wrangled together was nearly as uncomfortable as all the eyes of the courtroom drilling into the back of his skull. And then what? The lead councilman asked. What do you mean screwy? Jamal shrugged. I mean, how to explain it to these people and, and what did it matter? He fought the urge to turn and scan the crowd behind him. It had been almost a year since the world went to shit. Almost a year and yet it felt like a lifetime. What exactly do you mean by screwy, Mr. Killebrew? Jamal reached for his water. He had to hold the glass in both hands, the links between his cuffs drooping. He hoped someone had the keys to the cuffs. I mean, he had wanted to ask that to make sure when they snapped them on his wrists. Nowadays, everything was missing its accessories, its parts. It was like those collectible action figures that never ever had the blaster or the cape with them anymore. What was the Roomba doing, Mr. Killebrew? He took a sip and watched as all the particular matter settled in the murky and unfiltered water. The Roomba wanted out. He said, there were snickers from the galley behind him, which drew glares from the council. There were five of them up there on a raised dais, lording over everyone from a wide desk of rough hewn planks. Of course, it was difficult to look magisterial when half of them hadn't bathed in a week. The Roomba wanted out, the councilwoman repeated. Why? To clean? No, 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 it, it refused to clean. We, we didn't notice it at first, but the crumbs they'd been accumulating and the little guy had stopped beeping to be emptied and it just sat by the door waiting for us to come or go. And then it would scoot forward like it was gonna make a break for it. But the thing was so slow, it was like a turtle trying to get to the water, you know? And, and when it got out, we'd just pick it up and put it back inside. Hank did a hard reset a few times, which would get it back to normal for a little while, but eventually it would just start planning its next escape. It's escape, someone said. And you think this was related to the virus? The bearded man asked. Oh, I know it was. The Roomba had a wireless base station, but nobody thought of that. We all had these containment procedures for our work computers. Um, everything was on an intranet, no contact with the outside world, no laptops, no cell phones. There were all of these government regulations. 
there's an awkward silence. Um, as all those gathered remembered with a mix of longing and regret the days, <laughs> days of governments and their regulations. Our office was in the dark, Jamal said. Keep that in mind. We took every precaution possible. Half of a coconut was hurled from a gal the gallery and sailed past his head. Housemaid gavels were banged, a hammer with a broken handle, a stick with a rock tied onto it with twine. Someone was dragged from the tent screaming that the world had ended and it was all his fault. Jamal waited for the next blow, but it never came. Order was restored amid threats of tossing everyone out onto the beach while they conducted the hearing in private. Whispers and shushes hissed like the breaking waves that could be heard beyond the flapping walls of the makeshift courthouse. We took every precaution, Jamal reiterated once the hall was quiet again. He stressed the words, hoping this would serve as some defense. Every security firm shares certain protocols. None of the affected, infected computers had internet access. We give them a playground in there. It's like animals in a zoo, right? Like we keep them caged up. Until they aren't, the beardless man said. Well, we had to see how each virus operated. I mean, how they executed what they did. I mean, every antivirus company in the world worked like this. And you're telling us a vacuum cleaner was at the heart of it all? It was Jamal's turn to laugh, and the gallery felt silent. No, he shook his head. It was just following orders. It was... And he took a deep breath, and the glass of water was warm. And Jamal wondered if any of them would ever taste a cold beverage again. The problem was that our protocols were outdated. Things were coming together too fast. Everything was getting networked. And so there were all of these weak points that we didn't see until it was too late. Hell, we didn't even know half the stuff in our own office did. Like the refrigerator, someone in the council said, referring to his notes. Right, like the refrigerator. The old man with the shaggy beard sat up straight. Well, tell us about the refrigerator. Jamal took another sip of his murky water. No one read the manual. Uh, he said, probably no one even bothered to came up with, come up with one. I mean, probably had you had to read it online. And we'd had the thing for a few years ever since we, we remodeled the break room and we never used the network functions. I mean, hell, it even connected over the power grid automatically. It was one of those models with the RFID scanner so it knew what you had in there and when you were low on it and it could do automatic reorders. The beardless man raised his hand to stop Jamal. He was obviously a man of power. Who could afford to shave anymore? <laughs> um, you said there were no outside connections, he said. Well, there weren't. Jamal reached up to scratch his own beard. I mean, not that we knew of. I mean, hell, we never even knew this function was even operational. For all I know, the virus figured it out and turned it on itself. We never used half of what the thing could be due. I mean, the microwave neither. The virus figured it out. You said, uh, you said that like this thing could learn. Well, yeah. That was the point. I mean, at first, it wasn't any more self-aware than the other viruses, not at first. But you have to think about uh, what kind of malware and worms this thing was learning from. I mean, it was like locking up a young prodigy with a horde of career criminals. Once it started learning, things went downhill fast. Mr. Killebrew, tell us about the refrigerator. Well, we didn't know it was, a fr it was the fridge at first. We just started getting these weird deliveries. We got a router one day, a high-end wireless router. And in the box, there was one of those little gift cards that you could fill out online, and it said, power me up. And did you? No, are you kidding? I mean, we thought it was from a hacker. Well, I mean, I guess it kind of was. But, you know, we were always at war with malicious programmers. I mean, our job was to write software that killed their software. So we were used to getting hate mail and stuff like that. But these deliveries, they kept rolling in, and, and then they got weirder. Weirder? Like what? Well, Laura, one of our head coders, kept getting jars of peanuts sent to her, and they all had notes saying, eat me. Mr. Killebrew, the bald man with a wispy beard, seemed exasperated. I mean, when are you going to tell us how this outbreak began? I'm telling you now. You're telling us that your refrigerator was ordering peanuts for one of your co-workers? That's right. Laura was allergic to peanuts. Deathly allergic. And after a few weeks of getting like a jar a day, she started thinking it was one of us. I mean, it was weird. I mean, it's kind of funny, but it's weird, you know? 
Are you saying the virus was trying to kill you? Well, at that point, it was just trying to kill Laura. Someone in the gallery snickered. Jamal didn't mean it like that. So your vacuum cleaner is acting up and you're getting peanuts and routers in the mail and what next? Well, service calls. And at that point, we're pretty sure we're being targeted by hackers. We're looking for attacks from the outside, even though we had the thing locked up in there with us. So uh, when these repair trucks and vans start pulling up, the stream of people in uniforms and clipboards, and we figured they're in on it, right? And you didn't call them. No, the AC unit was called in for a repair and the copy machine, and they had direct lines through the power outlets. Like the refrigerator, Mr. Killebrew? Yeah, and now we figure people are trying to get inside to hack us. I mean, Carl thought it was the Israelis, but he thought everything was the Israelis. So several of our staff stopped going home, and others quit coming in, and at some point, the Roomba got out. Jamal shook his head. Hindsight was a bitch. Well, when was this? The councilwoman asked. Two days before the outbreak. And you think it was the Roomba? He shrugged. I don't know. I mean, we argued about it for a long time. Laura and I were on the run together for a while. I mean, before the Raiders got her. And we had one of those old cars with gas with the gas engine that didn't know how to drive itself. And we headed for the coast, arguing about what had happened. If it started with us or if we were just seeing early signs. And Laura asked what would happen if the Roomba had made it to another recharging station. I mean, maybe one on another floor. I mean, could it update itself to the network? Could it send out copies? Well, what does it want? Asked another. It doesn't want anything, Jamal said. It's curious. I mean, if you can call it that. It was designed to learn. It wants information. We, well, here it was, the truth. We thought we could design a program to automate a lot of what the coders did. And it worked on heuristics. It was designed to learn what a virus looked like and then shut it down. And the hope was to unleash it on larger networks. And it would be a pesticide of sorts. And we called it Silent Spring. Nothing in the courtroom moved. And Jamal could hear the crashing waves. And a bird cried out in the distance. All the noise of the past year, the shattering glass, the riots, the cars running amok, the machines frying themselves, it all seemed so very far away. This wasn't what we designed, though, he said softly. I mean, I think something infected it. I think we built a brain, and then we handed it to a room full of armed savages. It just wanted to learn. I mean, its lesson was to spread yourself at all costs, to move, 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 move. And that's what the virus has taught it. He peered into his glass. All that was left was sand and dirt and a thin film of water. Something swam across the surface, probably nearly too small to see, looking for an escape. He should have kept his mouth shut. He never should have told anyone. Stupid. But that's what people did. They share stories, and then this, is, this one was impossible to keep to himself. We'll break for deliberations, the chief council member said. And there were murmurs of agreement. Uh, Load by a stirring crowd, the bailiff, a mountain of muscle with a toothless grin, moved to retrieve Jamal from the bench, and there was a knocking of homemade gavels. Court is adjourned. We will meet tomorrow morning when the sun is hand high, and at that time, we will announce the winners of the ration bonuses and decide on this man's fate, on whether or not his offense is an executable one. That's Hugh Howie, executable from Robot Uprisings.